Today, three signs that twin flame separation is almost over. What I'm going to do in this video is list the signs, one, two, three, and then I'm going to explain each sign. And as a bonus, I'm going to explain to you how you can tell that these are the signs, right? Because you're looking around online, you're trying to figure out what the real signs are. You seem to be getting a lot of different answers. How can you tell what the real signs are? I'm going to give you that secret in today's video. So sign number one is a sense, a, a general sense of a spiritual awakening. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how you can tell what that is. Like, how would I know if I was spiritually awakening? What is that? So I'll break that down for you. There's a general sense of a spiritual awakening. That's number one. And it's number one for a reason. Hmm? Very important. Number two, something called Satori. I'll explain what that is. Uh, number three is you haven't given your twin flame a thought in quite a while. You might get out of bed one day and you're going to go, I haven't thought about them for a week. Right. It's not going to be long after that that you're going to hear from them. So if you're new here, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Kurt. I am the world's number one twin flame coach. I've personally coached over 7,000 twin flame students to date. You're about to get a taste of the reason why that is. Something a little different than what you usually hear on the subject of Twin Flames on this YouTube channel today. My Twin Flame, of course, permanently in my life, and I've helped thousands of people uh, shut down the running and chasing with their Twin Flame using the scientific method. Totally serious. If this is a real phenomenon, and it is, Twin Flames, don't you think there's a real way that we can explain it? Right, there is a real way that we can explain it. And that's the part that I mentioned, the, the little bonus we're going to do in this video, where I said, yeah, there's a way that you can tell. What does everybody say about Twin Flames? And I mean everybody. No matter what advice you hear about what to do about Twin Flames or what signs, what are the signs, right? All those kinds of things that you hear about Twin Flames. It's all going to be different stuff on the internet, right? So what to do about it, advice, or the signs, you always get a whole bunch of different answers. But the one thing everybody, and I mean everybody says about Twin Flames is that your Twin Flame is your soul. It's one soul in two bodies. And that's absolutely true. The term twin flame was invented to describe two people who are the same soul. Here's an interesting thought for you. If everybody agrees about what a twin flame is, what's the problem? Like, why is there so much differing information about what to do about it or what the real signs are? Hmm, interesting. If we are all in agreement about what a twin flame is, what's the problem? Right. Guys, your twin flame is your soul. You don't need to do complicated healing tactics and techniques. You don't need to balance your inner feminine and masculine. You can do those things if you want. It's not going to hurt anything unless you're doing it to get your twin flame back. And I'm going to tell you why. But you don't need to do those things. You don't need to do the violet flame chant. You don't need to clear your chakras. You don't need to do any of those things, guys. You, it's fine to do those things ordinarily, but they don't help you here. And actually they make things worse. And I'll explain why. And then you're going to understand why the three signs are the correct signs. So let me break this down very simply. So back to basics, spiritualism. Right? Spiritualism 101, back to basics. That's how we roll at New World All-Star. You are body, mind, soul, right? Body, mind, soul. So if my twin flame is my soul, 
maybe what I need to do is start there. Understand how this works. Body, mind, soul. Like, what is that? Body, mind, soul. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about each of those components. So the body, we're pretty clear about that. Don't need to explain that one, right? Okay, the mind. Let's talk about the mind. Well, the mind is thoughts, emotions, chakras, metaphysical energy, right? Telepathy, Reiki energy, metaphysical energy, emotions, thoughts. Hmm? That's the mind. All of those things, that's the mind. And the mind works on duality. That's where the teaching, or that's one of the things that the teaching of yin and yang is pointing you at. It's the law of our universe, right? And in the discipline of science, they even have their own way of describing this law, the law of duality, of relativity, the opposites, yin and yang, alpha omega. So with thought and emotion, there's I like it, I don't like it, it's correct, it's incorrect, um, I feel good, I feel bad. Also perception, which is where you get into the scientific principle of relativity. So for example, I'm here, you're over there. And that's where the word separation came from, by the way. That's not really a twin flame term. You can use it for twin flames if you know what it really means. And I even made a video for you specifically about that topic. What the word separation, the also the word union, and the word detaching. Why are we using those words? What do those words mean in a spiritual sense? Where did those words really come from? What most people think in the Twin Flame community is that separation or union is a stage or a relationship status. It's not. It's got nothing to do with that at all. These are states of consciousness. So check out my video about these words, where they really came from and what they really mean. Uh, I'll put the link down below in the description box for you. The name of that video, Twin Flames, Separation Consciousness, Unity Consciousness, like union, and detaching, because what's up with detaching? What's that? Right. It has to do with states of consciousness. It's not a relationship status with your twin flame. Remember, you are your twin flame. Your twin flame is your soul. We're still talking about body, mind, soul. I'm just giving you the teaching about mind. And the soul is going to be easier for you to understand when I'm done explaining the mind. So just stick with me here. We're going somewhere with this. But yes, this teaching of separation contrasted with union or unity consciousness. When you realize what those words really mean and where they really came from, then you'll know what to do about your twin flame journey, right? This is your journey. This isn't really about the person. When the person stops rejecting you, when the running and chasing stops, that's just a byproduct of remembering that you are a soul, right? As opposed to the mind. Now, a long time ago, I don't know who did this. I'm going to presume 1960s, 1970s, you know, before the internet, somebody figured twin flames out. Somebody took the teachings of transcendentalism and superimposed them over the twin flame journey that they were experiencing, right? So, so again, separation, union and detaching. Those words come from transcendentalism. Again, I'll link the video down below for you where I explain that, break it all down, what those words really mean. But the mind is separation, you guys. Now, the internet comes along, gets a hold of those teachings and starts mixing them all up and messing them all around. And now nobody remembers the original teaching of separation and union. So now everybody's playing a game of telephone with those words. You think that those words are relationship status with your twin flame. And again, what's up with detaching? What does that word mean? That should be your first clue that you're not 
really using those words properly. Again, those are states of consciousness. Again, go watch my video. Now, the mind is separation. Why? Because it's duality. It's relativity. I'm here relative to you. I exist, you exist. My experience relative to your experience. Me, you, we. And we are separate. The mind perceives everything in separation. Everything. Very, very interesting. And you'll find spiritual teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das, Alan Watts, talking about how the mind is separation. Why are they using this word separation? Back in the 1960s, by the way, Hmm, maybe it's because that word isn't a relationship status with your twin flame and the internet, when it comes to the topic of twin flames, yeah, the internet's just playing a game of telephone. Do you remember that game? Telephone? Remember that? The teacher would put all the kids in a big circle and she would whisper a one sentence story into the ear of one kid and each kid would have to whisper the story all the way around the circle, like 30 kids. And then when it makes it back to the teacher, it's something completely different. Telephone. That's what everybody's doing with the true twin flame teachings. That's what those words are, guys. The true twin flame teachings are right under your nose, okay? The mind is the problem, guys. And the mind, I shouldn't say that the mind is well, I guess you could say it's the problem, but it's not a problem. If you call it a problem, that's actually the mind judging itself, right? The mind is what says things are good or bad, right? Yin and yang, good or bad, light or dark. That's the mind. It's duality. It's separation. I'm here. Everything else is out there. It perceives your twin flame as separate from you because that's its job. You see, the mind isn't, it's not defective because it does that. That's its job. That's what it's for. But here's the thing. It's not you. You are the soul. Body, mind, soul. Right. So we just talked about the mind. Let's put this other puzzle piece into place and it'll all make sense to you. The soul. If I was to ask you, who are you beyond the body and beyond the mind? Who are you beyond even the mind? You're going to say, I'm a soul, right? But what is that? What is that really? Try this on for size. There's thoughts and emotions going on. Have you ever said to yourself, why am I thinking this? Of course you have. Everybody's done that at some point. You notice that there's thoughts going on. What notices? What is it that notices thought? Think about it. No pun intended. What is this awareness of the thinking? How can you be aware of thinking? Awareness, consciousness, that's the soul. The soul is almost 100% consciousness, almost 100%. But almost 100% means you don't need anything else. The awareness of awareness. I am aware that I am the awareness. I am not the thinking. The name of the first chapter of Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, is called You Are Not Your Mind. That's the name of the first chapter. Yes, consciousness. What is that? It's the soul. Remember what everybody says about twin flames. They're the same soul. Meanwhile, the internet's telling you to do a bunch of healing, which is fine. You can do healing. There's nothing wrong with doing healing, but it's not the soul and it's not going to help you here. 
Healing is psychology, my friends. And again, it's fine to do that, but healing psychology does not cause self-actualization. Self-actualization might cause healing. The soul comes first, guys. Self-actualization comes first. Remembering that you are consciousness comes first. That's what this is all about, guys. That's why I'm the world's number one twin flame coach. Not to toot my own horn, but I didn't get here by an accident. I didn't get here by magic. It's just simple spiritualism, my friends. Real, authentic spiritualism, which is not psychology. Psychology is fine. Healing, psychology, same thing. Totally fine. That's just not what this is, guys. And again, remembering that you are the consciousness, remembering that you are not the mind. You can't even fix the mind. Healing, right? That's what that is, what people call healing, psychology, fixing the thinking, like rearranging the thoughts that you have, um, overcoming limiting self-talk, these types of things, right? That's all thought and that's fine. But what is the you that does that work? What is the you that is looking at the thinking and rearranging thoughts and healing and all this? What is the you that does that? Body, mind, soul? Hmm, could it be consciousness? Yes, my friends. Guys, soul comes first. A remembrance that you are consciousness, it comes first. And you don't need to do any healing at all to get your twin flame to stop rejecting you and to start feeling better and to start getting the signs. So let's go back to the signs, my friends. Now remember, separation union, so we just talked about the mind, its perception of separateness. There's me and there's my twin flame, that makes a we. But if you are the same soul, what is that? Union or unity consciousness. It's the remembrance of self as the soul. Let's just do a quick detour. This is Twin Flames. And I'll even link a video down below called Your Twin Flame is Your Past Life. And another video called What Are Twin Flames? Guys, reincarnation is real. Okay, this is the higher self in what people call heaven or the afterlife, which is really the before life. Hmm? Or you could call it the energy part of the universe. It's where you go when you do the thing that we call die. You don't really die. You just return to this plane of existence. So this represents a past life in the year 1770. In the year 1880, here's another one. There's you and your twin flame. Here's another incarnation. And the thing about time is it's not linear, so you can hop all around in here. You could, in your next life, you could go back to 1880 and reincarnate there. Okay? Your higher self is experiencing all of these individual incarnations simultaneously, my friends. All at the same time. So from your perspective in 3D density, yeah, time appears to be linear, but from these higher planes, there is no time. And that is exactly what science says about how time works. This actually follows the laws of physics. And yeah, your twin flame is your past life. It's really easy to tell. Go watch my video called What Are Twin Flames? And another video I recently made called your twin flame is your past life. You guys really are the same soul. If you get in a time machine and go back and meet whoever you used to be in a past life, are you guys the same soul? If you meet somebody who you used to be in one of your past lives, aren't you guys the same soul? Right. And by the way, 
you should go watch those other two videos because it explains why there is the push-pull between you and your twin flame. Now, getting back to the signs, yeah, it is true. Your twin flame, you guys are the same soul. That's true. The mind is what's getting in the way. The mind is what's causing them to run. That's why doing healing and energy work and uh, the violet flame chant and um, chakra clearings and balancing your inner feminine and masculine and the mirror exercise and all this weird stuff, that's making your twin flame run harder, guys, because your starting point is the idea thought that you and your twin flame are separate. Guys, that's the mind. That's separation. You, the real you, the soul, who you are beyond the mind, is consciousness and is your twin flame. You guys are the same soul. You guys literally are the same soul. <laughs> you got to do soul stuff, guys. You're doing mind stuff? Stop doing mind stuff. This is why sign number one, a general sense of a spiritual awakening is taking place. And if you want to know what I mean by that, go watch the Samadhi movie. There's a movie on YouTube. It's only an hour long. It's absolutely free. And by the time you're done watching it, you're going to go, I get it. <laughs> I really get it. <sighs> you're just going to watch that movie and you're just going to get it. It's called, again, Samadhi, S-A-M-A-D-H-I. There's three parts, right? Watch part one first. Don't start with part two or else it won't make sense to you, right? So watch it tonight. In fact, go watch it before you watch my other videos that I link down below for you, if you're smart, right? Samadhi, part one, it's called The Illusion of Maya. Samadhi, The Illusion of Maya. Go check it out, guys. You're going to have this general sense of a greater spiritual awakening. The mind, who you believe yourself to be, is going to be confused and asking questions about the spiritual awakening, about this greater sense of awakening. The greater sense of awakening is intuitive. It's a knowing. That comes from the consciousness of soul, you guys. You just know it. It's like deja vu, kind of, because it's this weird knowing, like, yeah, how do I know this? I just know. But how do I know this? Right. So that which is asking the question, how do I know this? You think that that's you asking the question. That's your mind. You're not that which is asking the question. See. There's a reason Eckhart Tolle named the first chapter of his book, The Power of Now. He called that chapter, You Are Not Your Mind, because you think that you are thinking about the knowing and about the deja vu. Like, how do I know this? Did I, did I do this before? Is this all true? Am I on an awakening? Is this my twin flame? How do I know this? You're not the one asking those questions. You believe yourself to be a thinker, the ego mind, the personality, but that's not you. You are actually the knowing, the deeper sense of awakening. Again, go watch the Samadhi movie. And you could read The Power of Now too, by the way. I have all of my paid coaching students, I have them start with that book. You wanna get your twin flame back? That's what you gotta do, guys. Your twin flame is your soul. You gotta do soul stuff. You gotta transcend the mind. You have to transcend the separation of mind. And when you do, they call that detaching. You enter unity consciousness. Union? Hmm, interesting. So the other signs, there was how you haven't really given your twin flame a thought in quite a while. You haven't given them a thought in quite a while. Why? Because you're just not focused on them. And to be sure, it's not that, oh, I get it. I get what you're saying, Kurt. I got to stop focusing on them and focus on myself instead. Well, not quite. You're almost there, but that's not quite it. What you're really doing 
is experiencing yourself as focus. It's not, I focus on myself. That's a subject object relationship. I focus on myself. That's psychology. That's healing. And that's fine to do that. But that's just not what this is, guys. This is going beyond the separation of subject and object. Two things which are separate. I focus on myself. That's separation consciousness. That's the mental state. Again, separation is not a relationship status or a stage. It's the mental state. Instead, you are remembering yourself as focus, as consciousness. I experience myself as consciousness. I am aware that I am awareness. I experience awareness. There's no outward focus necessarily. You could say it's an inward focus, but that's even not quite it. You got to go beyond duality. This is just oneness. This is not duality. This is inner peace. Oneness. You're not connected because that implies other. That's separation whenever you have other. That's not it. It's not that you're connected. It's that you are. That's all of it. That's one thing. And that's exactly, again, that's what the Samadhi movie that I recommended to you, when you're done watching it, you're going to be left with that sense. It's this mysterious sense to the mind. It's a mysterious sense. But what's really going on is it's the true self. It's beyond mind. It's not thinking. It's not emotion. It just is. You are awareness. So yeah, you're not focusing on your twin flame. You are them. And you're experiencing that. You're experiencing yourself as one. It's not a connection. By the way, another thing you're going to experience, it's called Satori. And I can't say enough about the Samadhi movie. It really is a great uh, starting place for you. If you're new to this twin flame journey, or even if you've been on it for a while and you're still confused about what to do and why isn't this working out and why are we going through all these cycles, why all the running and chasing with my twin flame, right, yeah, definitely go watch that movie, my friends. Because again, you're going to be left with this sense of stillness and inner peace, this knowing now, Satori is like that, only much more intensified. It's this very, very deep sense of inner peace. And you can't acquire that. So the mind right away, it wants to know, oh, I see. I have to get to Satori, right? That's separation. I'm here. I got to get there. Here, there. I'm not in Satori. Satori is the future. I got to get there. That's separation. I'm here. I got to get there. Separation. Duality. Yin yang, right? Not saying that's bad. That's just what that is. That's the mental state. Separation. That's the mental perception. Well, okay, Kurt. Well, then how do I do it? You don't. You who is asking. The questioner. The thinker. You're not that. You already are the observing consciousness of the thinker, of the questioner. Enlightenment is what happens when you dissolve the questioner. And I'm not saying it's bad to ask questions. You have to start somehow. Yeah, ask questions. But the interesting thing is when you reach enlightenment, so to speak, you're going to realize that I already was. That's the funny thing about this. You ask any great spiritual teacher, Buddha, Jesus, Hare Krishna, Krishnamurti, Paramahansa Yogananda, 
Rupert Spira, Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das. You ask any of them. Alan Watts. How did you do it? How did you get to enlightenment? They're going to tell you. Well, when I got to enlightenment, I realized that I already was enlightened. Trying to get to enlightenment was the whole problem. That which is trying to get there is what's in the way. It's what's blocking you, the mind. You already are consciousness, guys. You already are your twin flame. The mind is just providing this mental and emotional illusion of separation, of individual, of self. The true self, the soul, that's who you are. And Satori is the experience where the ego mind, it seems to just 100% evaporate for a while. Satori can last anywhere from seconds to weeks at a time. Some people, they live in a state of Satori all the time. Like Eckhart Tolle, for example. How did he do it? How did he get there? Again, not by trying to get there, but by remembering that you are not that which is trying to get there. You are not the ego mind. You're a soul, guys. And remember, at New World All-Star, I keep things simple. Your twin flame is your soul. You've got to do soul stuff. What I'm talking about in this video is soul stuff, which it turns out isn't a doing at all. It's just a being. It's a remembrance of who you really are beyond the mind. And when you experience that remembrance, yeah, there's a greater sense of awakening. Yeah, you're not gonna be focused on your twin flame and yeah, you're gonna experience Satori and boom, that's when your twin flame is gonna unblock you. They're gonna start talking to you again. If they're your twin flame. And if they are your twin flame, yeah, they're gonna do that. They will. This isn't soulmates, guys. There's no healing, there's no thinking, there's no psychology necessary. In fact, that's just getting in the way. That's all mind stuff. And again, watch my video called What Are Twin Flames? And also, Your Twin Flame is Your Past Life, where I explain why there is the push-pull with your twin flame and how I used the push-pull between twin flames to figure out, wait a minute, your twin flame is your past life? Remember, time is not linear, guys. Yeah, you're literally watching a replay of one of your previous incarnations. Pretty cool stuff. Guys, that's the signs. That twin flame separation is almost over. And again, how you can tell that these are the actual signs. I hope you found this video informative and a little different. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next week for another Twin Flame video.